down to the masters. Break it down. Welcome to another episode of the Muddy River Breakdown with Chuck Daddy and D.O.B. We actually got lots to talk about now that seasons are in session. We still don't have no theme music, though. We do. Oh, is it coming in post? It's, it's supposed to be coming. It's but According to the guru of videos, we're going to have theme music now. Because I, I want I want to get pumped. I want to get pumped as I'm, as we're getting ready to go. I was listening to my boys from the 618 High School Huddle. Yeah. Uh, they, finally, they finally got off their butts into the show finally. Uh, this week. And Finally, they've got some like wrestling guy uh, who does who does their introductions. <laughs> Bobby Pounders, and when the Pound Man says, "Are you listening to something?" You better do what the Pound Man says. Well, maybe so, we need to get an introduction then. We need where's somebody. Jake, to, Dirty Jake Durden. Where's he at? I don't remember, know. Jake, remember Jake Durden? I do remember. He's Jake an independent Durden. wrestler. So Pittsfield's own. Maybe we could get um. Maybe we could get Dustin Jacoby to Ooh, voice something for us. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Yes, or the, well, the, well, the best one we had Stephen A. do our, our do our promo for uh, <laughs> yes. uh, Sports Center. I don't so, think okay. I, so supposedly, so I apologize then if you got to hear our break it down before we came in, but I'm not hearing it. And Dob needs to hear that. That's my pump up music. Okay, well, we'll work on that. We got to get headsets big enough for your head too. Do we even we got one right here? That'll yeah. fit. Well, okay. See what I have to do though. Usually, because my head's so big, and for those of you who don't know, I wear a size eight noggin. <laughs> Um, Rick Little still w- says he's still working on getting me a Quincy ha- a Quincy hat. I still wear my triad hat. Okay. Jesse Booger, the triad baseball coach, hooked Make me sure up. Make Reed's one. freshman year, I got two of them. So in okay. case I wore one out, I got a backup. Okay. So uh, that's why I wear a triad hat around because that's all I got that fits me. Whatever happened to your Culver hat? Didn't that well get you a Culver, Culver hat that was size eight? Tr- tr- um, tr- uh, yeah, Culver hats. I got a Culver hat, but it's old. I got a QU hat, but it's old. So... Um, you know, I could sir if Josh Raby wants to hook me up with a new QU size eight noggin, I would do that. I would do it. I, you know, I take. We, free we stuff. have a guest in the studio while we're while yes. we're taping this. The dirt himself, Stevie Dirt, Stevie Mud, Stevie Mud, and he says he wears a size eight and a quarter hat. It's too bad we don't. Have How do you find mic. a hat then? Uh, that would be. My, I mean, okay, I have so a big noggin story. too. So I'm, I'm not because I'm seven and. Seven eighths or seven and a half, you know, somewhere in that range. I, True story. High school DOB was at the one, as a Quincy, uh, not the Quincy Mall, excuse me, one of the malls in the Quad Cities. I can't remember which, which okay. one it was. And it was one of those sports stores. And there's a good looking girl that was working in the store. So, of course, you went in. So, I went in there and, yeah, hey, <laughs> baby, hey, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I was trying to place, you know, <laughs> throw my game down. And I'm trying to fit these sizes. I can only see high school DOB thinking he has game. <laughs> yeah, right? I had none. I'm like, hey, baby. You got any hats that fit in my head? And, she, and she's like, uh, yeah, let me see if I can find anything for you. And they had no size H in the entire thing. So I slunk out of there, um, embarrassed that, you know, this, this chick who I thought was. Did you even get her looking. digits? I did not get her digits. I was too, I was too ashamed that she couldn't find a, fat, a, a hat to fit my head. Can you imagine that? Um, okay, so I, obviously, you know, I like to wear ball caps. Yes. Do you have a, like, I know you wear your triad one, yes. you know, but do you have a favorite ball cap? Like, one that you go, man, or a favorite team that you want to make sure you have a cap of? I have two favorite hats ever in my collection. Neither okay, one fits it anymore. So, uh, during my high school days, uh, I, I had, listen to this. Okay, so this is, you, you thought you know, it was funny, the DOB going into the, going into the store. Okay, so you got to think, we're like 1986, 87 uh, era. I, I got a leather Black leather Chicago Bulls hat that, fit, that somehow fit my head. Wow! I thought it was I thought it was the bees. Oh, I still got you, it. You you thought you were you were it? Didn't I thought you? I was it. That was one of my favorite hats ever. My other favorite hat ever. I bought at. Um, I took my wife now then fiance now wife back to uh, to Roger Dean Stadium back in nineteen hundred and ninety two or three. Okay. For uh, Cardinal Spring Training. Yeah. And uh, we got it was a St. Patrick's Day game, so I bought a St. Patrick's Day hat oh, when you couldn't nice. get a St. Patrick's Day hat, and they actually had them in my size. Wow. So, um, but those are my two favorite hats ever. I know I think everybody's got a favorite hat, but does your favorite hat still fit you? Uh, it does, but it is gross as could be. Was it kind of it's a Mizzou? Hat, it's a Mizzou hat, it? yes. Of course, but it is it's faded. It was once black. It's now like a shade of gray because it's so old. Uh, and I would throw it. I would keep it in the truck. So I would throw it on the dashboard as I was running around and then put it on. Well, sitting in the sun and stuff, it faded it out. 
plus the sweat and plus okay, always so wearing here, it. Here, and, here's a great question for you, and, and for those of you playing the home version of D.O.B. and Chuck, you can also play this game too. Okay. Um, my wife one day bought, she came back from the store with like one of those things that you can put a hat in and wash. You can put it, your hat in the wash. Yeah. Would you Have you ever laundered a hat? Because I will not do it. Yes, I have. You have laundered a hat. I have laundered a hat. Why? I, do, I just don't. Well, why? Very, uh, for a very specific reason. Yes. Because I had a hat that, that I liked but didn't fit right. I couldn't get the bill to bend the way I wanted it to. So, you so I by- washed it to loosen the bill up. And it worked. Okay. And because then I was I, able to I, bend I, the bill because I'm not a flat bill guy. Me neither. That's not how you wear a ball cap. Come no. on. Ball players don't go on the field with a flat bill. No, they're not supposed to. They're not they're supposed not, to. What was the name of that Cubs reliever that used to do that? I don't know. It's a Cubs reliever. Why would you Why would you know the name of a Cubs reliever? Oh, he was a hothead too. Um, anyway. Anyway, uh, but I was always worried because obviously the, the, the bill is cardboard. Yeah. For the most part, some cardboard-like substance. And I was always worried for it coming out like – wavy or something so <laughs> so did my, you my, actually my mother so, never washed uh, anyway my ball cap so did you wash your hat with your the the contraption your wife bought for you hell no no <laughs> no i'm not doing that oh never washed a ball cap in my life so did i tell you that i got a couple new ball caps this summer that i don't i still don't know where they came from uh you got a couple minor league ones right yeah, i did i got a box delivered to the house no return address like it came from UPS, delivered Did you it. Listen to it before you opened it to see if it was some kind of bomb or something. <laughs> no, I figured if it's a bomb, I'm done. So, okay. If somebody if somebody really wanted to go through all that trouble to bomb me, you're gonna take it. <laughs> I'll t- I'll take the hit. Um. Anyway, but it was a Quad City River Bandits cap, okay. which I love wearing. It fits mm-hmm. great, looks good. The black one with the yeah the baseball with the bandana over it, mm-hmm. and the other one was a bu- Buffalo Bison's cap. Buffalo Bisons. And it actually is too big. Really? Yes. Hmm. It's a, it, it was a, the the Quad City River Bandits cap is a seven and seven eighths. Fits perfect. Yeah. The Buffalo Bisons one is an eight. It doesn't fit. And it's too big. Hmm. You've got a friend with a size eight cut noggin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I kind of like wear that. The, who, who, who are they affiliated of anyway? They're uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Oh, okay. And it's where current, well... He got released recently, but Graham Spraker, former Quincy University pitcher. He got released. I didn't realize that. He did, yeah. So I don't know where he's going to end up. But, yeah, he was playing for the Bisons all year. Hmm. So, But you got to love ball hats. You got to love ball caps. Again, and, and as, much as, as much as I enjoy um, talking to and staying in communication with Riley Martin, mm-hmm. I can't bring myself to put on a Cubs hat of any of any. Oh, elk. no, no, no. No, no, no. Trade organizations. The only time. The only time I wore a ball cap of an opponent of a, a, a rival of one of my favorite teams. Did you lose a bet to Luke Guthrie? I lost a bet to Luke Guthrie, and I wore an Illinois cap at the John Deere Classic. Yes. Was it on a line I day? They used to have a line I day. It was. At the John, at the John it was. I and I, I and I and instead of going and getting like the navy blue one, so people really don't. I got the bright orange one. That's what he got you? No, he, that's what I, because I, I, I bought it myself. You look like a construction cone. I did. But, and of course, the moment he comes, so that day he started on, he started that day on number 10. Mm-hmm. So when he got to nine, he comes off the nine green and he's going to the scores tent, scores trailer. Yes. And he sees me. For the first he, time all, all first day? First time he'd seen me all day. And he noted, the first thing he just, he, started, he pointed at the hat and started laughing. Well, at least you paid up your bet. Of course I did. Because it well, and the bet was, and it was a foolish bet on my part. He and I went and played at Westview, mm-hmm. just for fun. He and a couple of his, uh, a couple of buddies. Oh, I figured he did it on Illinois Mizzou basketball. Oh, we, but we did. We had some bets on that, but we did. We we played a round of golf, and I just what had did you seventy five shots I aside. Had, no, it, it wasn't about score. I just had to outdrive him on one hole. It never happened. No, why would you ever? It was fun. We were just messing around. We went, we went and hung out at Buffalo Wild Wings afterward. Yeah, that's, that's and a good day, but it was still, a good day. I would at least like maybe longest putt or something. You might have a chance know. on that. It was that. just, it was a fun bet. Are you a visor guy? I have a, I no, have a visor guy. I'm not a visor guy. However, I got to give give my guy Josh Bakke, Quincy Northern basketball player. Got to mm-hmm. give him. He's got a big old crop of hair. Mm-hmm. He had a visor on the other night at. Uh, was it the football game or the soccer game on Friday? It was at both. I think it was the soccer game in the afternoon and then the football game at night. But he had a visor on, and with his big old crop of hair, 
It looked good. I gave him props. I can wear visors. I've got a favorite master's visor. Did I ever tell you about the time at Augusta National? I don't think you've ever been there, have you? Oh, boy, come on. <laughs> so, Cap. That's yeah, a phone call I will never rem- I will never uh, forget either. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah cap, so. Ball, ball hat, but, you know, think, if, if you're listening right now, think about what your favorite ball cap is. Tweet at us. Tweet us at your, ball, That's what your right, favorite yeah. ball cap. Well, well, Maybe well, if you're wearing it even. And uh, yeah, take a picture. Make sure you got a top on. Send that. us a picture of you and your and your favorite ball cap. I know our our guy from Galesburg, Matt Wheaton, mm-hmm. oh, will do that because yeah. he's a big lids guy. He's got all kinds of different. He's got lids. all kinds of different lids. So, but I would be a lid guy if I could flip and wear them. <laughs> if you could find the right size, yes. Well, we'll work on that. We'll work on. Maybe we can get you a muddy river lid. A muddy river visor would be about as good. A, <laughs> okay, so no one golf. So the muddy river hat would be like a trucker's hat with 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 with, with, with a mesh in the back. Oh yeah, and the like the poofy like stuff in the front. They're popular, are they? They're extremely trucker hats are really popular right now. Well, why doesn't he make some and put them down and put them on sale down at the junction or something? I don't know. In his, in his home, in his home village. I don't know. We'll have to see what he I'll try to get him to do something. Show up once in a while and do something, right? You know. Anyway, um, so obviously we've been talking ball caps, but not a lot of baseball going on right now other than major leagues, but we're knee-deep into fall sports. How much did you enjoy Friday, last Friday night? Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, it was such a fun time. And uh, uh, for whatever reason, my kid wanted to walk the sideline with me, which was fine. Uh, he's a senior at Quincy High. Right. Um, and I was like, don't you want And you sit? walked both sidelines. It wasn't yes. like you just walked the Quincy High sideline because he was with you. Correct. I, I was diplomatic. In the first half, I was Quincy High. In the second half, I sat on the, I, I walked the Notre Dame sideline. Hey, I am nothing if not Mr. Neutrality here. And you wore black. So I wore you, black. You, were re- you and I both did. Yes. Even though so. my kid goes, even though the Quincy Public School District gets my tax money, even though my kid goes and plays for the Quincy High School basketball team, I still wore black. Uh, he wore Illinois colors for some reason. He didn't even do the whiteout. He's so – he's not Mr. – I mean, he's got school spirit. He he was very happy that the Blue Devils won. Yeah. But he's I not mean, into all that other shenanigans. Right. Which is okay. But he enjoyed his night. I talked to him a few times had, during the he, night. Yep, yep, he had a good time. So, I had a good time. I mean, what – I mean, pat on the back to the entire community first off. No question uh, about it. I mean – What a to, great crowd. Four to 5,000 people there probably just oh, guesstimate. My. I don't know if I've seen a bigger crowd there for playoff games or anything. I mean, they were all the way around the field and several deep mm-hmm. at every spot. I mean, if you showed up late, you were standing. Yes, Without a doubt. Without and, a doubt. Uh, and, and it was great. And, and and the other side of that is it wasn't a contentious crowd. No. Like, there, you didn't have to worry about anything, any extracurriculars or anything. The crowd was into it, but they were they were civil in the fact that it's kind of a rivalry game. Mm-hmm. But they, it was just a pure celebration of community and football. Remember 10 or 12 years ago when the when – the, and I can't even – it's probably been actually longer than that. But when these two teams didn't play in anything, like the major sports, I'm talking boys basketball and football. football. I'm not saying the other sports are not major because they, they're their own special thing. But those kids had always had the opportunity, the soccer teams, the volleyball teams, uh, the baseball teams, the softball teams, they've always, they'd always had the opportunity to have that bragging rights game. Correct. Uh, but the – some people in this town thought that if they ever played in football, that there were going to be riots on the streets. If they ever played in boys basketball, there were going to be deaths in the, in the alleys. Yeah. Uh, and none of that has transpired. No. Uh, it was just a great night to celebrate Quincy. Yes. Uh, which, uh, even though I'm not a Quincyan, and I've, I've only lived here 20-ish years so of my you're, life. You're a Quincyan. Uh, yes. In I'm, that I'm, sense. I'm, still, I'm still a hot dog from Galesburg trying to make a name for myself. <laughs> R.I.P. Um, Mr. Joy. The... Uh, it's still it was a great you know it's a, it's a great event for the community. Yeah, uh, you even saw uh, online earlier this week that uh, uh, QND's principal commended some young people from Quincy High School yeah, and the Quincy great. Junior High for sticking around and helping clean up afterwards. Okay, my my 84, 84 year old mother yes calls me up and says, "Did you see Mark McDowell's post on Facebook?" I'm like, mm-hmm. "No, I've been working, Mom." Yes, um, and she, but she was delighted. Yeah, one that not only did kids from the public schools helped clean up afterward, but that the parochial school recognized it and that the relationship was mm-hmm. so good. Because, I, you know, I would say, as you well know, I went to a Catholic grade school, but I went to Quincy High. Mm-hmm. I'm a Quincy High alum. So I, I, I can feel it from both sides. Yeah. You know, and and it is. And, and it, so Saturday or Friday afternoon, the Notre Dame soccer tournament began. So Notre Dame played a home soccer game on that afternoon. 
as soon as it was over, I had to run home and take care of Buster before I came back for football. As I'm leaving, it's four, you know, four fifteen ish, yeah, four thirty ish, you know, right there, the range. They're already gathering in South Park tailgating, mm-hmm. and as I came back about forty five minutes later, there they were, and there were kids playing, you know, touch football and and parents tailgating, um, and then you talk to people in the parking lot or people that were coming up to into the stands and stuff, and just the great conversations of people who were just enjoying the moment. Yep. Um, you know, obviously it turned out to be a really good game, 21-13, Quincy High School won. Um, but I think the the celebration of football and the celebration of community is what made the night special. Without a doubt. And the and if you looked if you talked between the lines a little bit, uh, there's so much respect for the kids on each team. Uh, there was no there was no I don't even remember were there any unsportsmanlike penalties no. at all? No. The only penalties were the False starts. And I mean, the, there are a million of them. Yeah, <laughs> because you know it was the first game for obviously right. Both there teams. Was, so yeah, so there but were there were nothing. There was nothing. There was no shenanigans or tomfoolery no, on the field. None, none whatsoever. Uh, and if you and if you stuck around long enough after the game, and I did, uh, you know, you see Jackson Stratton who can't even pull up his arm going over to Braden Little afterwards, saying, "Hey, congratulating him yeah. for a good job doing the same thing to Braden." You know, there's that. Uh, and I can almost guarantee somewhere yes. somewhere in this city on Saturday. Some of the Quincy High football players ran into some of the Notre Dame football players somewhere, and they broke it down. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, they talked about the game. You know, mm-hmm. I guarantee it had to, it had to happen somewhere. Or yeah. they were, or they messaged each other on social media mm-hmm. or something. The other cool thing about that is, um, and I don't know if you noticed this, but the, the Twitter avatars, the profile pictures, mm-hmm. a lot of guys changed their pictures to pictures from the game from that night. The, yes. It was really cool to see see how much they embraced that game and that moment. Um, well, yeah. I'm going to pull a Barry Horowitz here a little bit and pat pat myself on the back. Not me specifically, but Mud River, uh, the Mud River organization, uh, news slash sports. Uh, Frank Can's video was unbelievably good. Uh, great, uh, great. Curious Rice actually spliced that up and put it together his own little highlight <laughs> I saw that. It that he put online. Um, you know, you talk, you know, and those kids, I think they appreciate that type of coverage. And I thought we did, you know, I tell you what, I think all, you know, not just single us out here, but, you know, with, with what, uh, you know, the fact that people who couldn't make the game were able to watch it live online, uh, yeah. you know, th- it was. I mean, my, it, my, my parents are in their 80s. Yes. They weren't going to that game, no. but they were able to check it out. They were able to watch the stream of it. Yep. Thanks and, to WGM producing that. Yep. KHQ had some great highlights. Yep. So, you know, I, yeah, it, WTAD it, and WGM it, both did the game yeah. on the radio. So. so it was a complete yep. effort by the community yep. to highlight this game. And, and somebody asked me, um, and, and Frank Can, who did the video production for us, uh, somebody said the same thing to him. Does it bother you that kids are taking your photos, in my case, and using them as their profile pic, or that they're splicing up his video? Mm-hmm. No, not at all. Doesn't no. Go for it, because we do this for the kids. Correct. And, and I think that gets lost sometimes, um, and people get testy over you know publishing rights and all that. No, this is for the kids. We wanted to highlight them, and that's why we do the Prairie State profile each week. That's why we do the Show Me Spotlight. That's mm-hmm. why we do what I started last week with question of the week. Matt, that's why you've done what you've done for the last 30 some odd years of your life. Exactly. It's that's why, you know, for a great majority of my, I mean, that's why I got into it. I want, yeah. I, I wanted to, you know, so often, um, you know, we'll, we'll, the only time a kid ever gets any kind of recognition a lot is when, if they've messed up and done something bad, if they, yeah, they're, you they're, know, this is a great people. way to highlight uh, our young people. And it always has been, and it always will be. And we'll continue to do it. And we'll continue to do it this week as we spread out and go cover a whole bunch of stuff. Anything about Friday night's game surprise you? Um, probably. I thought Notre Dame would be a little better offensively. The, I mean, I tell you what, I don't know what Jacks. I you know we're 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 not. This is not the NFL, and I don't know what Jackson's status is. Right no, now, but but, he, talk, but him but getting hurt, him. Yeah, they need him bad. Yeah, they because do because I, I I didn't even realize it until I started breaking down the numbers as I was writing my game story. Was the fact, I knew that once he went out of the game, Notre Dame's offense really didn't go anywhere other than one play, a long pass to uh, Chuck Lavery. Uh, but that was like 44 of their 70-some-odd yards they had after that. Uh, they averaged like three yards a play, whereas with Jackson behind center, they averaged six yards per play. Right. Uh, they didn't score any points after he left the game offensively. So, uh, you know, I think the one it thing— cha- It changed the dynamic of their attack on that mm-hmm. night. Now, with a week to adjust— if he doesn't play this week, 
then I think I think you'll see them be okay. If, well, if, they, if also, they start Noah Lunt at quarterback who came in. And, and if they have to do that, uh, I think this is a great spot for them to do that in for the simple fact that even though Allman is 1-0 and did, did get a win over Chicago something or other yeah. uh, last week, uh, there's still it's still going to be a, a, a tough row for right. them to hoe against yes. uh, Notre Dame no team with a lot of quality players. And uh, you know, talking to Jackson Stratton after the game, he says, "Look, this hope, this could be a wake up call for us. This this game does not define us." Uh, on the flip side of things, I think it's a great start for Quincy High. No question. Uh, that's exactly what they needed. Uh, Jarius Rice uh, was a, a ton. Uh, he was he was a lightning to Brian Douglas's thunder in the backfield. Uh, yeah, they've got to uh, again. I, he, think, I think he was as good as you and I expected. Yes, but no one talked about him all week. Right. He was. Find me anybody. Find me anybody in the media that said anything about Jarius Rice prior to kickoff. Nobody. None. And uh, he was kind of the secret weapon. Now, I think that the Quincy High passing attack has a little ways to go. Um, you know, the, Braden throws a great ball, and, and again, and that's all timing, and that's all that'll all come once there. with more it'll, reps. It'll get there with more reps. But he's got they've got they've got silly weapons around him. They do, and and you know, Aiden Byquist showed what he can do with mm-hmm. the balls in his hands, uh, and a bunch of other guys who who can make plays. Well, the thing that jumped out at me is the the number of college coaches I talked to who either watched the game, watched the stream, or were there, mm-hmm. who all talked about how well the ball comes out of Braden Little's hand. Yep. Like, they they foresee, they think the other pieces are just as good. You know, the Byquists, the Quinces, the guys he can get the ball in the hands to. You get in their hands, they can make plays. Mm-hmm. But they said that for a sophomore, the way the ball comes out of Braden Little's hands is special. We'll see. They got Alton on uh, home on Friday night. Yeah. That'll be an interesting one. I'm going to be out at that one. And Notre Dame's at uh, Rock Island Allman on Friday. Had a couple of interesting th- other things over the weekend. Quincy Notre Dame boys soccer team won its own tournament. Quincy High or Quincy Notre Dame volleyball team went over to Quincy High and won the early bird tournament. So we got two teams right there that are doing some special things. Big week of volleyball this week in the area with the Suns Classic going on. So, like, if you want to get out and see any area of volleyball, they're all there. Soccer Civil Wars this week, too, right? Soccer Civil Wars Thursday night. So, within uh, six days, we will have had the Quincy High versus Notre Dame football game and boys soccer game. So, this will go up before the Soccer Civil War, right? Yes. So, uh, give us a little preview of uh, what, what, what do we got. You've well, seen both. I, I think the fact that Notre Dame is more dynamic offensively uh, will we'll aid them, uh, certainly in this matchup. I think Quincy High is pretty solid defensively. Um, because they have some experience back there in Nolan Fleer. Um, it's going to be interesting because they're, they're in the, in the, we can't ignore the other storyline here is former Quincy High player Deacon Schutte is now playing at Quincy Notre Dame. His family moved out of the district, and so he transferred to Quincy Notre Dame. And uh, it'll be interesting. You know, he kicked the other night for the football team. And two really good, two really, two really two good, good field goals. Field. The and one was only forty-five yards. By yes, the way, yes, correct. We've, we've got people saying fifty-two, fifty-three. No, no it was forty-five. Forty-five yards. So they're at the twenty-nine yard line. Yes. So, so anyway, but you heard some some cackles from the Quincy High section when he came on the field. Yes. So he'll expect some of that Thursday night, but sure. and it's even probably more more so because soccer is his main sport. It's always correct. Has been. Correct. So that'll be an interesting kind of little side note to that to see how how he handles that, how the the opposing team handles that, mm-hmm. you know, all those type of things. But I, I think they're two relatively evenly matched teams, but I think Notre Dame's strength offensively wins out. It's more important for who to win this game. I don't know if it's I don't I don't think it's more important for either because it it won't matter to um Regional or sectional seedings or postseason play. It's strictly or any, for bragging rights. It is obviously. strictly for bragging rights. It doesn't have anything you know, to do with the any conference. football had a little twist of playoff points and well, playoff they, wins. Hey, and the, the football thing is, you know, you got to get to five wins to qualify yeah. for consideration for the playoffs. Six will get you in. Mm-hmm. So winning that first week, because think about it last year, Quincy High finished four and five. Correct. They had won week one. They were in the playoffs last yes. year. So. You know, yes, in football, it's a very important game as far as playoff implications. In soccer, it has no playoff implications. Other than when you go to the seed meeting, you can go, look, if Notre Dame, you can go, look, we beat a 3A school. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Well, so Notre Dame hardly plays any 1A schools anyway, so they're, right. they're, their schedule's littered with 2 and 3A schools. And so. you saw that over the weekend and the way they mm-hmm. played with with who they played against in their own tournament. So, um, but I, th- I think they lost their season opener against Peoria Notre Dame, who was really good. And then now they've won four in a row 
and and two more home games this week um, to complete a seven game home stretch. All first seven at home in eleven days. Wow. Yeah. So by the end of Thursday night, they're going to be tired. Uh, let me ask you a couple other things that I that you know I, I sit there and I watch the, the the both the local news stations every night with their with their sports coverage. Yep. So again, I've been I've been removed from this for a while. So I got I have things that I make mental note of, and I was like, I need to ask Chuck about this on <laughs> okay. Tuesday. I need to ask Chuck about that. Um, how much? What do we talk about with Hannibal and the fact that they they lost their first football game? Uh, Jefferson City allies is always a tough team. Is that do, do we do we have worry in America's hometown no. or not? I'm not worried. Okay. Uh, one, you got a great coaching staff. Two, you've got players with some experience. Uh, obviously, they have to to rebound from last week. But week one, a lot of times is okay. Show show me what's wrong as a coaching staff so we can fix it. And I think they saw some of that. I think they saw some of that in the Jamboree. Mm-hmm. So now it's now it's okay. How do we fix this? How do we get better? Markel Humphrey ran the ball well, over 140 yards rushing. Aeneas was Aeneas. Mm-hmm. I think he needs to get more touches. Personally, just yeah. in in the sense of he's the best player on the field. Sure. So so get him the ball as much as you possibly can, in the right way. You know you don't want to overwork him, but but he needs touches. Um, but I think defensively they've got a few things to shore up, uh, which will be their their work ahead for this week. Um, but I, there's no, we're not pressing the panic button. No, no panic buttons right now. Okay. So, so, uh, one of the other games that we're going to, uh, staff on Friday night would be, uh, at central, uh, Correct. Pleasant Hill goes to central, uh, central plays what Carrollton zero, zero in the first quarter and then puts 40 some on them and Correct. like gets the running clock on them. How good are they? Central could be really, really good. They have size up front, which helps at the, especially at the one, a level, Mm-hmm. They've got a variety of guys to give the ball to. I think what not, level? They're one A. Okay, they're one so A. Smallest one. Okay. Smallest one. So, um, I think the thing that jumps out to me about them is their versatility on offense. Now, Brad Dixon runs a program there that accentuates speed. They call them the Fast Cats, mm-hmm. um, and they work they work on speed throughout the year, speed and strength training throughout the year. Um, and it shows. It shows, it, but it also shows in the variety of weapons they have. I think nine guys touched the ball the other night out mm-hmm. of the backfield. Now, granted, sometimes that happens later when in a game a when, it's, yes. when it's a blowout. But I, I want to say all nine guys touched the game before it was a true blowout. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're going to mix and match guys. Plus, they've got some guys going both ways. Are they the most likely one of our small schools to make a really deep playoff run? I would say so. On the Illinois side, I, I, li- I liked what Brown County did Week One against Calhoun, um, but but their depth could be an issue just because they're young mm-hmm. and the, when it comes to depth. Um, but they're 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 two top guys, Colby Wirt and uh, Cole Beheimer, are two really guys to build around, and then you got some really good pieces there as well. Um, so I think they're a team to watch. I think Unity Payson is going to be a fun team to watch. Um, to see how they progress. You know, they beat the snot out of North Green on Saturday. And they got to turn around and play a Thursday night game this week. Short week. Short week. But they're ready for it. They're so, liking the Mac. It's like the Mac action, baby. So, um, those are the teams, I think, in our coverage area on the Illinois side to really – Macomb's the other one. Macomb, and, and Macomb's new to our coverage area. We have never covered Macomb before. Mm-hmm. Um, but Macomb's got a lot of weapons. They've got a lot of experience. What class are they 3-4? They're 3. Okay. It might even drop down to two. So the head scratcher for me for the weekend, and again, I'm reacclimating myself to all this. True, was when back in back in our Harold Wig days, uh, when you talk small school football, Illinois side in this area, who was the number one team that you spoke about every year? Illinois West or Illini Carthage? Carthage Illinois West. And I'm watching the highlights, and they're getting boat raced. Um, what happened to Illinois West football since I've been not been paying attention? It's not the same, uh, you know. You go through phases, and every program seems to go through phases where you don't have the horses. They don't have the horses. Wow. The way they once did. Yeah. So it comes down to that, you know. So it's just cyclical. They're just just now on the the downside. And they're young. I mean, if looking at their roster, they're pretty young. So I think give them a little bit of time, um, let those kids grow. I think you could see some really good things out of Illini West in the coming years. Kind of like Pittsfield. Pittsfield took it on the chin to the number two ranked team in the state last Thursday night. But I think Pittsfield's going to have a good year and be a good team where I believe the seniors, the senior class has three wins in its career. 
At Illini West? At, no, at Pittsfield. Oh, Pittsfield, okay. So I think, I mean, it's been down for a while. Wow. So that's crazy because, again, yeah, for people, I mean, before before there was Carthage, there was Pittsfield. Pittsfield, yes. Uh, so those two traditionally strong programs, one's trying to climb its way out of the hole and the other one's still kind of in a hole. Yeah. Okay, one more thing we got we to we talk about before we get to uh, – we we're right at the half-hour mark right now, but I will quickly. We're good. Um, the deep slant. Monday, <laughs> you kept no one on your fantasy football. Not that we're going to talk fantasy football every week. No, but it's draft but time, and it's the best time of year. It for is, and we and, and we're the only time we'll talk. We're about in it all the year. same. We're in the same fantasy football league. The Archleister Fantasy Football League. That's right. And you kept no one. I kept no one because my team was awful last. Year. I was I was a non-existent owner last year. Are you gonna Are you gonna set lineups this week this year? <laughs> yes, I am. You'll set lineups. You're going to be at the draft. Last year, I just the last can't. time you okay. You missed a draft a couple years ago. Who drafted for you? Kevin Murphy's son. No. Oh, oh, that was okay. you. The, couple, the year that you won, the last time you won the league, who drafted for you? You drafted for yes, me. Yes, <laughs> and I drafted you a winner. You know how many, I've been in that stupid league. Even when I lived in St. Louis, I still stayed in the stupid league. I've been in the stupid league like 25 years. Yep. I've got zero championships. I may as well be the Chicago Cubs of this league. Never won. Yeah, but you were. The DOBs are But you won a division last year, didn't you? I did win a division last That's year. That's what I thought. See, I... I I, and I apologize to the league what about midway through the year yeah. because I just I did I just I lost all interest in it last year and just kind of gave but you're up committing on my team. this year you're committing to, I am to, committing to to, to, to to paying attention I am setting lineups paying attention who's on the bye week yes so the dobs are bringing back we're, so we're I will proud. be I will be prepared for draft night okay we're uh, fi- uh, five p.m. next week at the uh, at, at the, the schedule at the place we cannot talk about on the air correct so five o'clock Monday Labor Day. Um, the notorious DOBs are very happy to bring back uh, Justin Haybear, mm-hmm. Bobby Haybear's son. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, Jamar Chase coming back. And who's my third? Oh, DeAndre Swift is also back okay. in the fold. The only one I could have kept from my team last year was Lamar Jackson. How much would he have cost you? Uh, but see, I think he was up to 35 or 40. Oh. See, what happens in our league? We have an auction and, a, and a, a set. Auction keeper league and whatever. Like last year, I got Jamar Chase for a buck. Yeah. So now he's eleven dollars. Uh, hey Bears thirty five, and I think DeAndre's thirty one. Well, that was was it three three or four years ago. I got Lamar Jackson for a buck. Yes. And so he was a great keeper for three or four years. And, and the, the 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 somewhat dynasty in our league lately has been Eddie Hussar, uh, retired Harold Wigrider. because he he drafted all Chiefs at one point. And, no, he drafted in the same Mahomes. draft. He got Mahomes. Derrick Henry and Alvin Kamara for a sandwich. Right. And has kept those guys. Although Kamara, Kamara got cut loose. He did. Uh, so uh, Eddie's only rolling with uh, – and Eddie's one of these guys. He's one of those owners that, uh, you know, he scours the waiver wire constantly. Oh, he, he will – he'll take all week to prepare for the draft. The draft will take six hours because every pick he'll want to assess before we move on. Yes. And then he'll spend every week, again, scouring the transaction wire – to see who's been cut, who hasn't, who's injured. He'll, he'll read the injury report. But he's also very frugal. He is. Uh, he's very frugal with his dough. So the fact that he's already laid out 130 of his $200 allotment. See, and that's the thing. I, I got a clean slate. I can spend all I want when we get started. So the last couple of years, uh, I've gone, I'm like, okay, I want big money. So last year I took uh, Christian McCaffrey injured. Not as worse as with the one year that Stevie Dirt, who's now leaving the office, Took Ladanian Tomlinson for 90, 90. 90 bucks. Was it 90 yes, or 91? Yes, it was 90. 90 bucks for Ladanian Tomlinson. Oh, his $200, $200 cap is what, what we kind of give each other. And he spent 90 of it on Ladanian Tomlinson. And Ladanian Tomlinson did nothing that year. Nothing. Unreal. So, so here, I don't. But, so so are you gonna are you gonna go big? You can go big on one guy or not? I might. You never know. I gotta. I, hey, I'm not relieve, releasing any Drew secrets. Locke, by yet. the way, available and not starting. Not going to start for Seattle. They announced yesterday that Geno Smith's been tagged, picked as their starter. Uh, I don't. But, okay, so here, but here's my question. So yes. we have a league and it, it, standard fantasy football: quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, defense, yes. blah, blah, all the kicker, you know, blah, blah. The one thing we don't draft, and I've seen leagues do this, is an offensive line. I don't know how they get points, sacks allowed, and all that kind of stuff. Is there any way I can? Have an extra pick in this, and so I can pick Andrew Rupsich. You can have Andrew Rupsich. Did he make the team? Well, we're as we tape this on Tuesday afternoon, he's still on the roster. Final cuts have to be done today. Okay. So, but he's got a shot. 
Okay, that's like in, in Pat Atwell's fantasy baseball leagues. Yeah. Uh, once he started getting guys like Kenny and Raby to the major leagues, he automatically had yeah. their, their, their draft rights. Well, and, and back in the day, I had to have Byron Chamberlain. Uh, what about uh, what about what Albert O? Are you going to get Albert O? I don't know. He doesn't have Drew Locke thrown to him anymore, so I don't know if his quarterback will throw to him. <laughs> Russ, he might be even better this year. It might be. You never still know. Denver, right? Yes. So we'll see. You're gonna put, you're gonna draft Luther Burden for a buck and oh. see if he's gonna stick around after. Uh, Dude, I still gotta get my hands on the Luther Burden bag no of chips. No Luther Burden Burden chips. Not yet. Okay, I haven't so had a chance to go to St. Louis yet. I don't know if the boy. I'm gonna tell the six one eight boys that that, that that we talked about him, and I don't know if they're still listening 35 minutes into this or not. We'll see. But can you hook? Can you can you go to Schnucks and hook up Chuck with some some come Luther on. chips? Are they gonna come up for a basketball game this year? They've talked Reed? about it. I want to get them here. I, they did. They came to a game. They came to a Blue Devil game last year in Moline. In Moline. Now, part of um, that was because Moline had gone to the Highland Shootout. That's before they went to the Highland Shootout, right? Um, but uh, they just decided to go all the way to Moline. So I want to get them up here for a, for a Blue Devil game, and we'll take be, care of them. Yeah, they, they're bucket, a couple of Dupoy boys. They do the six one eight high school huddle, which is a podcast down there. Really good podcast. Yep. Entertaining. They're a couple of knuckleheads just like us. That's right. Um, Jim and Scott and. Uh, uh, they come up to a game, and I want they when, but they when when they are like third grade with each other in Dupo. These guys are in their mid fifties, but their Dupo coach in like fourth grade brought them up here to a Blue Devil game so they could watch Jerry Leggett. Play. I never knew that. Oh yeah, they like they are like little little you know they had their little Dupo Warriors or whatever they were. Yeah. And, have, you, uh, have you ever been to Dupo? I've driven past Dupo's a dump. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I covered a postseason basketball game there in Dupo. Payson Liberty? played there. Payson, Payson played, played there. Dupo. I believe it was against Madison. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have called Dupo a dump, but <laughs> no. but but it is right. But there's no seating on the floor at Dupo. At Dupo, I believe JT used to be the Dupo head coach at one point in basketball. So I think that was my that's my only visit ever to Dupo. Dupo, uh, I believe also Norm Sanders is a Duponian. I believe what he is, too. A Duponian? Dupo du, du, du person? I don't know. I, I don't know. Duponian sounds right. A Dupity? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if we can get them up here during basketball season. we got to get them up here, yeah, because... Uh, That'd be a know, lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've already talked... I'm a member of the Quincy Rotary, and we have an exchange student in town right now okay. uh, for the year, and she went her to her first foot, American football game. All right. Uh, she's from Germany. She... she Went to America's first foot American football game, and I said, "We're going to get you to a basket. You have to go to a blue level no question." Game. So she's she's looking forward to that too. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I know. And I've been on Twitter last week. I saw you know Andy put out that you know open gyms are starting next week, and I was like, "Can we just get to Thanksgiving already?" But we <laughs> I got to make sure that I that's the dad in you. That's the dad in me wanting to see my kid play again. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, we got a lot of good stuff to look forward to here in the fall. And, we do. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, make sure you ch- get. Get on our website, MuddyRiverSports.com. Check out all the things we're posting each week. Prairie You're State. working hard. I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep, try again, for the kids. You got to do it for the kids. That's right. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, buddy. We'll do it again next week. We will. We'll break it down because this is the Muddy River Breakdown with Chuck Daddy and D.O.B. Give it out to the masters.